Teleglitch, final level. Thank you for sticking with me through this series. I hope you've been enjoying it. When I first found out about the game, I heard that it was Tough But Fair, which is the sort of game that I probably like the most. After some practice, I found the first one to be too easy, which is not really a common experience, but the designers seem to feel similarly enough to make this new version, and I appreciate that. The game is certainly delivered on its title. As I mentioned in previous episodes, I've died plenty of times getting used to this version. But I haven't really felt it was unfair, and usually I've been able to learn what to do differently and improve myself for the next run, or at least over the next couple of runs. Being the last level, this one has the nastiest patrols. But it's ac actually not as bad as it could be, because the final level is always pretty linear. So you tend not to have to worry about patrols coming from unexpected directions. I think what was improved the most in this version is the feeling of scarcity. Because of the ammo drops from machines in the previous version, it was... Oh boy! Ah! Duh! That's a laser gun! Yep. Scientists can use a laser gun. Just in case there wasn't enough... Oh! That's more than one of them, isn't it? That's three! Ah! <laughs> dead end, dead end. And another laser gun! <laughs> this game retains its ability to scare the bejesus out of me. I like this. I didn't want the game to let me get complacent, especially when the last level is supposed to be the hardest one. Um, maybe I should have just stuck with the SMG there. There was really no need to switch to the 6T revolver at this point. I guess I just wanted to be fancy about it. Ow, ow. 20 health through armor per zap. But at least I got to show what happened when that thing attacked, right? It is technically possible to dodge that if you're running parallel at a certain distance, but it's difficult enough that I don't bother. That was not good aim on my part. Once again, the magnet shield saved me there. Or at least saved me from a decent amount of damage. Oh, laser gun. I'm, I'm going to admit something. I don't actually know much about what's in the A levels. The moment I find out that there were B levels that were not in the uh, original game, I went for, right for those and practiced them until I knew them as well as I could, because I planned for this kind of recording. 
and challenge. My understanding is that although the B levels are harder, there are certain things that you can get much earlier. For example, I don't actually know if you can get a laser gun before this point if you take the A levels. Oh, that beep beep. Oh, hey, minigun. Where were you when I needed you four levels ago? As it is, unless more scientists show up, I don't think I'm going to use the minigun at all. Kind of a shame, but that's randomness. Oh, this room has been more or less unchanged from one version to another. It's the last stand of the zombies. Maybe I shouldn't have let myself get surrounded like that. But at least I got the chance to take part in the experience promised by the demo of the first teleglitch. It said, tell your friends to buy this game so they, they can blow the microchip brains out of zombies with automatic double shotguns. So I was living the dream. That's more empty cans than I thought I would have. So remember when I said I would only make two plates out of empty cans because they're so valuable? It looks like I lied. So many of them dropped randomly this time through that I might as well. I don't think I'm going to find enough explosives to turn them all into cannon rounds. And I'm through most of the level already. I wouldn't say that I'm done with the hard part, despite the three squids at once part. One of the nice things about having a spare inventory slot is that I can take out the things I don't use and just drop them so that the box doesn't appear on my map anymore. At this point, my uh, recording nerves were making me really twitchy. If you've ever done this sort of thing yourself, you probably know what I'm talking about. The good news is that I've managed to store up enough ammo for what I need to do. With certain other builds, I've actually run out of ammo at the last boss and thus lost the game just because of that. That's one of the reasons I like the cannon so much. It's a sort of an ammo multiplier. Whoa, that was a clean takedown. Maybe my aim is improving. Might as well take the big explosive with me this time. It's something extra to throw at the boss, at least. Speaking of, here we are. Remembered to make a stimulant this time. 
Oh, here you are. A lot of guns. This boss has a lot of separate sections of it, so the area effect of the cannon is great. I'm safer from the gun turrets than I am from the rocket turrets. Ow. Should not have let that hit. Hiding behind cover is only marginally useful mostly for reloading because the guns will take out those cover spots really quickly. So first thing I'm doing is to defang the outer part by shooting all the guns I can see. Didn't intend to break through the outer wall quite so quickly. That makes this next part really dangerous. I believe that these lasers are not quite as damaging as the uh, squid lasers, but uh, they're dangerous enough. At this point I probably should have used a med kit and my plates, but not paying attention. I think that's all of its weaponry, so time to cut this thing open. Oh. Well, I think that's it. Gotta remember to use that med kit and armor now, because, I mean... Well, why not? Also, teleporter works better when turned on. That's the end! It took me a lot of tries to get this, but uh, of course I'm happy about the result. Especially the accuracy. I think that's the highest accuracy I've had at the end of the game. I hope you enjoyed watching this, because I enjoyed making it, and I have more games planned for the future. See you then!